The Gospel of Luke is an interesting approach to the story of Jesus, and it differs from John, certainly, but also from Matthew and Mark, even though all four Gospels tell essentially the same story. They all give us insight that tells us something more about who this Jesus really is. And so we have the story only in Luke's Gospel of the Annunciation, of the angel Gabriel appearing to the Virgin Mary in Nazareth, up in Galilee, sometime, we don't know when, but we celebrate it on March 25th. And today, on May 31st, we celebrate the arrival of Mary, who comes to help her cousin Elizabeth, who is now already in her sixth month. She's almost near term at this point. And so, you know, it's this wonderful story of this woman who probably was somewhere around 14, who comes to help her older cousin, relative, we don't know exactly what the relationship was, but her older relative in the final days of her pregnancy, when it gets very difficult. And she comes to put her life at service. And when she calls out to Elizabeth as she comes, already Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, you know, responds and says, but who am I that the mother of my Lord should come to me? It's this wonderful encounter between these two pregnant women, one about three months and the other almost full term. And they carry within them the promise of salvation. Elizabeth, who carries John, who will proclaim the good news of the kingdom and help prepare the way, and Mary, who gives us the Savior. And it is this back and forth. You know, Mary responds with the song that we say every evening or sing every evening as part of evening prayer. That my very being proclaims the greatness of the Lord. And it is that wonderful image that Mary, carrying the gift of Christ within her, it transforms her. And she knows that this will transform the world bringing down the mighty and raising up the lowly, filling the hungry and sending the satisfied away empty, that this gift somehow will change everything. And that's been a process that's been going on for 2,000 years. Now, there are some who would sit there and say, well, you know, the world hasn't changed all that much. There are still wars. There's still violence. There's still all kinds of inhumanity in this world. And that's true. Somehow it hasn't changed everything, not like we would hope. But you see, my sisters and brothers, the only way it can change everything is if people are willing to change. That's always the rub. That's always the problem. That without a willingness to change, well, all of those evils will continue in our world. Today, we gather to celebrate the visitation. And we recognize this moment in history 2,000 years ago. But we also celebrate this moment in history today. Because you and I come here to encounter the Lord again. He'll come to us in the gift of his body and blood. He comes to us in his word. He comes to us in this gathering. And the question is, how will we live that gift when we go out there? Are we open to the changes the Lord wants to work in us so that the promise will become more real in this world, that his life will become more fully recognized in this world, that his promise will become more the agent that changes all things? We gather here and celebrate once more the visitation. We celebrate the visitation of the Lord to Mary. We celebrate the visitation of the Lord to Elizabeth, and we celebrate the visitation of the Lord to us today. And we pray that that visitation, that gift of the coming of Christ, will help continue to make the changes in us that will reflect the Lord's love, his kindness, his mercy, his truth, his promise to a waiting world.